I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago, but all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays. Way back a year ago. Hello and welcome back to our traveling vlog. As I mentioned in our last video, we were given a list of places we should definitely visit. So, the next place on our list was a small town called Hita. A work colleague of Hikaru had requested a special soy sauce from there as omiyage. The town was on our way to our actual destination, the hot springs of Kurokawa. So, we made a little stop there. The air in Hita was very special. Because of the hot springs and the forest in the mountains, there was a pleasant fur scent and lots of moisture in the air. We found the store that Hikaru's colleague had meant. The shop had a large selection of different handmade products like soy sauce, bagashi, mirin and miso products. I was a little surprised at all the Attack on Titan sketches inside and outside the store. We found out that Hita is actually the hometown of Hajime Isayama, who is the mangaka of my favorite anime Attack on Titan. So we bought some soy sauce and wanted to find out more about this place. You can also play an Attack on Titan AR game in the city, which will take you to special places where titans appear on your phone. We didn't have so much time this day, so we had to skip this part and explore the area instead. Hita is also known for more than only soy sauce and Hajime Isayama. The people in Hita are also proud of the long tradition of making handmade geta. Therefore, at almost every road crossing, you will find a pair of Geta shoes on the ground asking you to stop. You can also find a lot of shops selling traditional goods. We also came across a little farmer's market. There was even a small shrine hidden in the backyard of the market. You could also get some umikuji here. We took a little break at a restaurant that specialized in unagi. We ordered a set menu for unagi don. The meal came with some condiments like chopped scallions, wasabi, yuzu kosho, and grated daikon radish. The unagi don was served in a beautiful traditional bamboo dish. The roasted green tea that came in the set was also perfect for making ochazuke. Here we bought some local yuzu kosho and left the restaurant.
Pita is a really beautiful place and I would like to pay my respects to it. I can totally understand why Isayama got a lot of his inspiration from this place. I think he really wanted to give something back to his town and let other people know about Hita. He supports the local farmers by letting them sell Attack on Titan themed products without taking money from them. He wants to bring more people to the city and support the tourism. Therefore, he also started an Attack on Titan themed museum that we also visited. The entrance is completely free of charge. They pay the employees and the rent for the building through the revenues of another themed farmer's market right in front of it.
After visiting the museum, we drove to Oyama Dam. This is the place through which Isayama got his inspiration for the design of the walls. For the walls and the city design, he got his inspiration from a town in Germany called Nördlingen. If you walk up the stairs, you can find a statue of Eren, Mikasa and Armin, recreating the scene from episode 1, where the colossal titan appears. We head back to the car to continue our road trip. Next stop of the day, Kurokawa Onsen. The river that flows through the village is really beautiful. At night you will see why this place is called Kurokawa. The village is also full of restaurants and little shops. There was even a bit of snow when we arrived at our hotel. We have booked a yokan for the night, which is basically a traditional Japanese guest house. This was our room for tonight. We had a big tatami room as bedroom and living room. Remember, never step on tatami with shoes. This can destroy the mats. We also had a terrace with a small garden.
and of course some futon. We also booked in private onsen room. So this is our own hot spring, in which we can bathe as much and as long as we want. In the closet you could also find some haori, which are jackets to wear over your yukata. As well as some obi belts, socks and the yukatas. The room also had a fridge, a water boiler and a safe. The bathroom was a typical Japanese one, so the toilet and shower are not in the same room. Here you will grab your toilet slippers and enjoy a modern Japanese toilet with seat heating. If you still have some issues with all those buttons and don't know how to flush, please let me explain it to you. If you don't want water splashed on your face, you should avoid those three buttons on top with the sitting people on it. So don't be confused about the side panel. You can always search for these two kanji characters. The upper one means dai or big and the lower one means sho or small. We were also able to book one of the public onsen for private use, but we were quite happy with our private onsen. After the first bath, Hikaru had recommended an ice cold latte. He said it was a common refreshment after a long hot bath. <sighs> we went outside for a little walk at night. Took a little break and ate some clementines, kaki no tane, and yakisoba pan. This was all for today's vlog. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to support me on this channel. Hope to see you next time. <laughs> well, it's time.